Hey friends, this is your host Bytor. If you are a recurrent subscriber, welcome back. If you are a new subscriber, welcome. There are two reasons you might be watching these videos. One, you have been tasked with interviewing some folks and want to spice up some questions to make sure you are getting top-notch candidates. Or number two, you are interviewing for jobs to either start your career or simply change companies and need to know how to best prepare for these interviews. Whatever your reason for being here may be, let me try to best help you prepare for your interviews. So with that said, let's jump into our interview question for today. Alright, let's start. This problem is rather interesting on interviews and it's asked on many companies as a primer to more complex topics. The interviewer will either show you or ask you to draw the following circuit. The question will be framed as follows. With the given circuit, let's assume that my input voltage swings from 0 to 5 volts in a step input response, and also that C2 is 4 times C1. At steady state, what is the voltage at node labeled V out? I would like you to pause now and try to figure out the answer on your own. If your mind went immediately to a capacitor divider, because it's steady state, you'll only get half the credit and you will be asked to elaborate further. The reason for this is because your answer only shows that you have memorized a simple structure like a capacitor divider or a resistor divider. And if you cannot explain the reason for the division, it means that you really don't understand how capacitors work. So let's explore the right answers that interviewers are looking for. Okay, so the first thing I want you to do on any interview that you have is to write down the available information that the interviewer has given you. In this case, we know that C2 is equal to 4 times C1 and that the step input response goes from 0 to 5 volts. So what now? Memory betrays us? Probably not. Okay, let's see. The trick with capacitors is that they always get charged through a current. That's very important to remember. Capacitors charge through current, not through voltage. But you're saying here, hey, I don't have a path to current. Capacitors usually block DC, so there is no current to flow. That's wrong. During the step portion of the step input response, we can get up to infinite frequencies depending on how ideal the step function is. Now, if we remember the capacitor's impedance is 1 over j omega c, we know that at infinite frequency, the impedance of the capacitor is 0. Therefore, we have a short between the supply and ground causing some current to flow. Now, when the current is flowing, the capacitor will get charged. And what is the capacitor charge? You guessed it right. Q, the charge of the capacitor, is equal to C times V. Now, another interesting aspect of the circuit is, as you might have guessed it, that the current flowing through capacitor 2 is also flowing through capacitor 1. That means that the charge through both capacitors should be the same. This can also be explained by saying that the bottom plate of capacitor C2 is tied to the top plate of capacitor C1. That means Q1 equals to Q2. Now, since we know that Q equals C times V from our previous equation, then it should be rather easy to figure out what the answer is here. Another important point, and I cannot stress this enough, remember that the V from C times V is a delta V across the plates of the capacitor, okay? So now, let's try to figure this out. So at steady state, the delta V across C2 is going to be V in at steady state, meaning 5 volts, minus V out. And delta V across capacitor 1 is going to be V out minus 0. If we say that Q1 is equal to Q2, then that means that C2 times delta V2 is equal to C1 times delta V1. So now let's get down with some simple math. If you don't remember this, okay, maybe you need to study a little bit harder, but Anyway, this should be really simple math, right? C2, that is 4 times C1, times delta V2, that is V in minus V out, should be equal to C1 times V out minus 0. In this case, we cancel out the C1s, and then we have 4 times V in, that is 5 volts, so 20 volts, minus 4 times V out, is equal to V out. Therefore, 20 volts is equal to 5 times V out 
and therefore V out is equal to four volts. Now, if we do the capacitor divider, of course, we're gonna achieve the same answer of four volts. But by doing a capacitor divider, the only thing you're showing the interviewer is that you remember a simple dump structure is this. You don't know that the charges should be equal on a capacitor, on a series capacitor circuit. That's the key and that's what interviewers look for. Now, with this circuit, we're gonna go through many different iterations of the same problem and build on this, but that's for later chapters. So, with that, I leave you with this very simple yet effective problem to learn. I have interviewed many times as mock interviews and as real interviews for jobs, and this is the primer for anything capacitor related.